I don't know about you, but I love trying new tools, especially if it's a new browser, oh, I'd be the first. However, in the past, actually replacing a tool that I already use with one that is simply just new and maybe a little bit shinier, generally doesn't actually happen because I already have my processes, I already know the shortcuts, I already have all this pre-existing knowledge and routines with all my tools. When I introduce a new product into my suite, it just adds more work and I don't like doing more work if I don't have to. But when this browser company says that it's redefining the way that we use the internet, doesn't it make you feel a little bit curious or wanting to know a little bit more about what is this browser all about? It's that same level of curiosity that you might have when someone asks you, do you know how sausages are made? And the fact is, no, I don't know how these types of sausages are made. So it's that same level of curiosity. So if you were curious about what this browser is all about, let's dive into the computer and break it down for you step by step. Now this browser is called ARC, so it's ARC.net. If you go to the website, there's actually not too much that you can see or learn about this browser. They're currently working in this invite only environment. So you do have to get an invite before you can get access to this browser. So when you go to ARC.net, there isn't really much. It just says ARC is a browser. But more importantly, it's everything you care about all in one place. So if we take a further look into what the website's all about, it says ARC is your space to breathe on the internet. Are you ready to let go of the old internet? Now really there's no information that you can really learn about this Arc browser. So as you can see, really that's the entire website. Now if you scroll up to the top and I show you the browser company of New York, if you click on this, this actually takes you to the website of the company that's behind the Arc browser. So once again, as you're scrolling through this website, there really isn't too much that you can learn about what they're actually doing. However, when you get to the bottom of the actual website, they do have a mission statement. And it gives you a little glimpse into what the company stands for and what they're trying to achieve. So a real quick summary is that the browser company, they're building a better way to use the internet. Okay, and really what they're trying to say is over the last 25 years, the internet has changed, has evolved, work has changed and evolved as well. However, browsers are still functioning the exact same way as it was 25 years ago. So this is where the browser company has launched Arc to redefine the way that we actually use the internet with an entirely new browser. Once again, it is backed by a very skilled team and they've actually raised $17 million. So I felt a little bit curious to better understand who's actually behind this entire company and this initiative because really you can't find anything about the actual team except they've mentioned there are people from Tesla, Medium, Google, Amazon, and all these great companies. So with a little bit of digging around on LinkedIn, I found the browser company. They currently have 44 employees and they are based in New York City. And based on LinkedIn Insight, over the last two years, they've been increasing their headcount and employing more and more people. Now, to better understand who's part of this company, you can see that more than half of the entire company is engineering. So it's definitely a tech-driven company and they're probably pushing a lot of great features into the product. This still doesn't answer the question for me, which is who's actually behind this product? So with the further digging, I found that Josh Miller is the CEO and co-founder of the browser company. And previous to this, he's been a board member at Patreon, but he's also been a product manager at Facebook. And here's the key insight. The other co-founder is Hirsch Agrawal. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I don't think I did. He's the co-founder and he heads up the engineering side of the browser company. But if you take a further look at his experience, he also was a software engineer at Facebook. So I believe that they work together, not because they just work together at Facebook, but because 
He was also the co-founder and CTO of Branch.com, which means if I click on show all six uh, experiences, you can see that Josh Miller is was also the CEO and co-founder of Branch.com. So they've actually had some fairly positive and successful experiences working together, which leads me to the fact that I think Arc just might have a chance to break through the noise as a compelling product for using the internet. Now that's it for the backstory. Let's actually dive into the product and let me show to you some of those key features of what Arc has to offer today. And at the end, I'll share my genuine thoughts around whether or not I think Arc has a chance in replacing Chrome as my default browser and my general thoughts around this entire space. So let's just go ahead and bring over Arc. This is the Arc browser and I've actually got the designership website opened. So if you do wanna learn from me, if you do wanna take on one of my courses, if you do wanna upskill in Figma or use a research, which is a new course that I'm about to drop in the coming weeks, make sure to check out the designship.com. Now, with that said, this is the Arc browser. Now, the first thing I wanna highlight is that with the Arc browser, navigation and your tabs are actually located on the left-hand side. As you can see, this is the menu. So if I go to Twitter, that's the search bar and you actually have your additional tabs over here. So if I increase, I add new tabs, let's say I go to um, LinkedIn, you can see that the tabs are now nested on the left-hand side. So if you continue adding more and more tabs, it just nests down. I have to say, when I first started using Arc, this was one of those things that just made it a little bit more challenging in trying to customize myself to Arc because I'm so used to having the search bar at the top and having it on the left-hand side did require me to really think about it. In the sidebar, you can also see that as default, you can actually integrate your or connect your Twitter and also your Gmail or your Google Suite accounts. So you can have them uh, pop up over here and you have direct access to it. I think this is actually pretty handy. And I think this is what Arc means. The internet is evolving. Social media is such a big part of our lives. So why not bring through that into the actual browser itself to make it easier for us to stay up to date with the things that we are engaged in or following. So I actually found this as a very, very useful uh, integration of the browser as a default feature. It's not a plugin, it's nothing additional, it's just native to the uh, browser. So I actually quite like that. Now, as you can see underneath, you can also create different folders and also different spaces. So down at the bottom, you see that there are two icons over here. This light bulb one is for general browsing that I've defined. And then this one is for the designership. So general is generally for my personal use. And if I'm working and everything to uh, related to work, I try to keep it all inside the designership because that's my practically my full-time job. That's a great way to sort of create like little profiles in your search behavior and to like group your information and group your browsing history and all your tabs. I really do like that. Now there's a few more things in the sidebar, which is quite great. So let's say you don't like the fact that the sidebar is taking up so much space. Well, you can actually go ahead and close it and you have an entire view of the viewport. So your website takes up 100% of the width and the height of your monitor or the viewport, sorry. And to bring it back, all you have to do is just hover over it and you can also bring it back. That's a neat little tool that I like and I actually do close it up when I'm actually uh, inspecting different websites and I'm doing maybe some browsing. I do like to have the full view, but something really cool that I do like is libraries. So here, the library is somewhat, imagine an asset folder, uh, sorry, a folder for all your assets. So if you click on all, it has all your files, all right, and then you also have screenshots. You also have downloads. So everything in your downloads pops up over here and you also have your desktop. Now I do find this quite handy because what I realized was I do drag and drop images into specific prompts. It's like if I'm posting an image to LinkedIn or Twitter, I can simply just drag and drop. And I found that quite nice. I also love all the little details that they're putting into this product. Like Chrome, Safari, uh, Firefox, all these browsers, they're very functional, but there's nothing delightful about it. And I think this is how it is trying to differentiate itself from other browsers. It's really focusing on that Apple's approach to what a browser might be. Now, the attention to detail and their approach in designing and building this browser, it really does help me understand that they are targeting a very specific niche right now. It's those 
people in the tech industry, the designers, the engineers, people who really appreciate this level of attention to detail. Like to be honest, my father couldn't care less about this parallax effect or this hovering effect. He couldn't care less about the glow. He couldn't care less about all the little details because he doesn't need it. He doesn't require it or he doesn't even want it. He doesn't even think about it. He just wants to find information and utilize the internet. But for people like us in the tech industry, we have very specific requirements and we have really specific needs when it comes to using products. And we have really high expectations because we spend most of our time in this entire space. So the library is a very neat addition to have it native within the browser. Now, if I go ahead and close that, there is one more thing that I do wanna show you within the sidebar that I think is pretty neat. And it does make sense to why Figma is one of the investors into Arc, the browser. So if you click on this plus little icon, you can go ahead and create a new space, which is the way that you classify and create different accounts for different uses, new folders, this easel, right? So if I click on that, it's like a whiteboard. So you can do anything. And I believe they're probably using some level of technology or some level of Figma's code base to generate something like this. So you can go ahead and just type in anything you want. You can also drop down any images, right? You can go ahead and drop any image down. You can put in whatever text. You can also put some shapes down, do arrows. And the great thing is you can also draw. So I think that they're using some level of Figma's technology behind this. And it does make sense why Figma is also one of the investors. So it's a great tool for not just browsing, but it is what they said, using the internet. It's not just finding information anymore. They're really expanding the feature set. Now, when it comes to browsing the internet, there are a few neat little features that they have inside this product. So in terms of ad blocking, that is a default feature that is already integrated into this browser when you set it up. So most ads will be blocked. Then you can also do split view very easily. So holding down control shift and equal sign on your keyboard, you can go ahead and split the view and create something new. So you can go ahead and browse Google. You can also do it once again, and that will split it into three columns. Um, let's go there. Now, as you can see, Arc is pretty well designed. They're really going with a user-centric approach to building this product and delivering a product that actually suits the modern day user when they are actually using the internet. Now, there are a few more features that Arc currently has. So if you go to spaces, there is the ability to edit your theme and you can either do dark mode or light mode. And also they do have extensions as well. So if you go to extensions, you can see that uBlock Origin is the native uh, ad blocker that is already inbuilt into the browser. Now here is the billion dollar question. What are my general thoughts around Arc? And is it the perfect browser for a designer? I've been using Arc for around a week now. And I will be honest, Prior to using Arc as my default browser, I did have it installed. However, Chrome was my default browser. And because I'm so used to it, due to habituation, I would always just be returning to Chrome because it's easy to use, I know how to use it, and nothing really is broken with Chrome, which is why it was so hard to try to start using Arc. There was just no real incentive or real need or value to learn Arc. However, after speaking to a friend of mine, he suggested, maybe you should try making Arc your default browser. So after that call, I actually did, and I've been using it for a week now. And I do have to say, after being forced to learn how to use Arc and start using Arc on a day-to-day -day basis, I do appreciate the neat little details that comes with Arc. So for example, when it came to uh, taking a look at my Twitter, taking a look at my calendar, the ability to connect my social media and my platforms to this browser natively, it was a neat little trick. It was nice to have that inbuilt in, into the browser because clicking through, I didn't need to type in Twitter anymore. I could just simply click the icon and it would take me to the actual page. Split view is also a great benefit because I do use the Pro XDR display, Apple monitor, and it's huge. So. Having the split view does work really well and I do like that feature a lot. Now, when it comes to the sidebar, it does take a little while to get used to, but eventually I actually found it quite effective in a sense. 
I don't actually open up as many tabs as I would with Chrome or Safari or Firefox. I don't know why, but I do end up having less tabs opened and utilizing the existing views more frequently. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I will keep an eye on what is that subconscious effect that's having on my behaviors when the sidebar is utilized for navigation. Now, because I have only just started using Arc, I haven't been able to leverage the spaces, the easel, and some of the other integrated features just yet, but I will do a review in a couple of weeks time or even in a month's time once I've used Arc enough to justify some of my rationale. Now, since this channel is all about product design and business strategies, what are my honest thoughts around Arc? So in terms of product design strategies and also business strategies, I think Arc is trying to cave out a very small cohort of users to target at first. So first they've actually launched this new product invite only. So they're creating demand by creating scarcity, right? So they're manufacturing scarcity with limited invites to make more demand so people want to use this browser. Now, the second thing that I've noticed them doing is that they are really targeting this product to people in the tech industry, product designers, software engineers, people who are a little bit more savvy in terms of UX design and building like beautiful, delightful products. That's their innovators, those are their early adopters. So they're really targeting these people to use it first and fall in love with it first. And then you would eventually, if you like it enough, you'll start to refer it to other people. Generally great products stem and utilize this strategy to get started and to start tackling and scaling out to the mass market. Now, with that being said, they have raised $17 million. So my thought is that it is always great to be designing user-centric uh, products that don't really think about the business side. But my question is, how do they plan to monetize it? Because after raising a significant amount of cash, you do eventually need to think about strategies to monetize because these investors do want to get paid eventually. So my question is, how do they plan to monetize this browser? That is one of the key questions that I'm asking because companies like Google and Apple, they have an agenda to run a browser for free because they have so many other products, features and initiatives that can leverage the users that use their browser that justifies the cost of it. So with Arc living on its own, a product on its own, I'm just wondering who's going to be paying for it and how will they be paying for it? Now, if you do want access to Arc, I do have five free invites. So let me know in the comments below, what would be the very first website that you visit with the Arc browser once you get access? And I will pick five random comments and I will somehow get these invites over to you. Now, if you also have any thoughts around the Arc browser, let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear what your genuine thoughts are. And if you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button and subscribe for the diehard fans. And I will see you in another video very soon.